let me paint you a picture whether you know of the show My Home Hero or My Clueless First Friend. Now, Crunchyroll has a bit of an issue where, at the very least, the shows that I'm following any given anime season, one or two times in a three month period, a show that I'm watching will have incorrect subs. And I'm not talking about poorly translated, I'm talking about subs from a show called My Clueless First Friend somehow end up on My Home Hero. The only thing seemingly they get right in those moments is that they're both at their episode 6. And if it's a large show, say they do it with a Demon Slayer or an Attack on Titan, it will usually get fixed within an hour or two because the internet complains loud enough. A show like My Home Hero, which is a bit of an underground show following a father who ends up killing an abusive Yakuza boyfriend of his daughters, you know, this, uh, getting it mixed up like this, you're definitely in the weird wheelhouse where things aren't going to make sense at all, but also it's going to take a lot longer in order to for the subs to be corrected. And a show called My Clueless First Friend, which I know very little about, but apparently it's about some school hijinks, you know, a little bit of an outcast friendship dynamic, supposed to be wholesome from what I understand, don't quote me on that, I haven't watched it other than the little bits to compare subs. And you have to understand that when I go up to watch episode 6 last Sunday of My Home Hero, when I'm looking at these characters where we're in a situation where we're trying to uncover some information to get into the dead boyfriend's social media, and we're thinking about the remorse of, you know, this is someone's son, and we're talking about pigtails, like, hey, Takeda, are you gonna wear pigtails too? And I'm like, Takeda, what, what happened here? People are commenting that the subs are mistimed. No, buddy, the subs aren't mistimed. We're watching the completely wrong subs, and this is probably the hardest I've laughed looking at subtitles that have been mis messed up, because the idea of putting some wholesome little school series about friends bonding and not letting peer pressure or bullying get to you, and we're talking about how if they're gonna have the same hairstyle as we're talking about Yakuza members and murder and death, and I'm like, Crunchyroll, bless your heart for never fixing this issue. I don't know how you continue to do it every season, but if I still get gems like this, I think I'm okay if you never fix it. But I had to talk about this, right? Because as someone who's been loving My Home Hero, I think it's arguably the most underrated show of the season. Quality character writing, different th plot and setting. And some people were saying, hey, Brandon, where was your video last week? Well, sorry, I, I kind of downloaded the My... My clueless first friend subs, it took Crunchyroll a little too long to correct it. But once they did correct it, it was actually a pretty good episode. But I had to bring that up, man, because that cracked me up. Not the first time this has happened on the platform, but goddamn, in my opinion, it's the funniest one. Because I think the only way you could have topped it is if <laughs> there's certain episodes of Attack on Titan where characters... Heads get blown off. Imagine my clueless first friend subs on those episodes talking about if Aaron's gonna wear pigtails after some of the final scenes. I need a minute. You gotta give me a minute. The more I think of this, is the funnier it gets. Oh, shit. Now, I have full live reactions to both episodes 6 and 7 available on my Patreon of My Home Hero, not My Clueless First Friend. So if you do want to see my full on thoughts to either one of these episodes, you can head on over there and consider supporting. Honestly, I think it might have been a missed opportunity. I probably should have just reacted to the entirety of episode 6 blind with the, the My Clueless First Friend subs. It would have been absolutely glorious, but we will talk about both episodes 6 and 7. I'm, I'm done memeing and done joking, but goddamn, I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. So, episode 6 and 7, we're basically in the situation where a character who I was really excited for because I kind of thought it would be like enemy of my enemy is my friend Majima just kind of felt like he was like okay he knew he did it but also at the same time it kind of felt like he maybe didn't like the organization after watching these past few episodes I'm not entirely sure because at this point it does kind of feel like well at this point it feels like he actually just wants to pin the blame on our boy Tetsuo and at this point I mean it just kind of feels like a character I thought could have been maybe an ally of some sort maybe is just a complete enemy and we came very close in episode six to him doing murder number two though I doubt he would have been able to get the jump on him he would have had to run the kitchen grab the knife and try to stab him and it wouldn't have worked out but what I like about the past two episodes is it highlights my favorite aspect about my home hero and that's the realism of seemingly normal people adjusting to a murderous lifestyle. So, it is hilarious, it is meme-worthy, but in episode 6, basically both a father and father's kind of bodyguard end up getting the runs, because the wife 
puts laxatives in the coffee and <laughs> dad has to go around back. I imagine he didn't wipe that well given it didn't look like he had toilet paper on him. Daughter sees dad taking a shit behind the house and the big Yakuza member is just, he's cramping up on the toilet because he has nothing that he can do, right? So at the end of the day, we're watching characters have diarrhea. They needed a modium at the end of the day. But if you're realistically going to get someone who you need to put a keylogger on their laptop, what is a realistic way other than jumping them? And do they really look like they can beat this guy up? No, but putting laxative, it's a realistic thing that it's so uncomfortable that even if you're dead set on murdering someone, I'm pretty sure most people would put the gun away for 5-10 to 10 minutes and go hop on the john because... Who the hell wants to soil themselves in the middle of that moment? And it is hilarious, it is an awkwardly and hilarious and meme-worthy scene, but you have to hand it to my home hero. I think many of us, after that first death in the first episode, we are like, oh, this is gonna be like John Wick, he's just gonna rice cookers, who knows, extension cores, he's just gonna kill, and while that could have been a fun show, at the end of the day, the realism of they aren't murderers, but they're trying to adjust and save their family. It makes for a pretty interesting scene, all things considered. And the fact that the video that they ended up shooting, I mean, sadly, it didn't work. Honestly, I wasn't thinking it would work fully, but I was totally expecting that it would last longer than it did. And the way that they basically called them out is because the walk, like, they weren't 100%. I think they said it was like 94% sure or something like that, that it was a fake video. They don't know why it was fake, but they know it was or they're pretty sure anyway. I love the fact that the walk was too different. That's the one thing they didn't research because really, did they have video to really memorize? No, they just knew the general look of the guy from photo. So I like the fact that they're being realistic about a lot of this content. With the latest episode, pretty much, I mean, our boy and this wife, I mean, the wife MVP, man, like she just, she got the earpiece in, she's cracking code, she's looking in emails, calling out the daughter, don't go with this womanizer. And by the end of the episode, the worst person ever, as he's casually in the place where he shouldn't be, opens up the elevator, and they just completely end the episode. I think next episode, episode 8, it's called like a spider's web or something, and I'm like, you can't be doing this to me. There's no way you're actually going to like trap him and he's screwed. I have no idea. I've watched so many anime, hundreds upon hundreds. I think I'm over the thousand mark at this point, according to my kid too. At the end of the day, I haven't been this immersed in a show to the point where I say I am over over halfway its first season, and I am more confused on how they can resolve this conflict than any other mystery show, because it just feels like the deeper they get thrown in this organization, the more I'm convinced they're getting framed. That moment with the mother when she goes over to Majima's mother's home, and we just hear about the family story, the father killing himself, and she has this bag of bones in a laptop or a tablet with the email and everything to frame. The fact that it was even a thought that, like, could we maybe pin the blame on her, but you just feel too guilty, like, no, I'd rather pin it on someone not like this. This show is so damn good, and I honestly think it's the most underrated show of the season. I, you know, everyone brings up what they think the most underrated show is, but for me, like, when I see these people talking about, like, Hell's Paradise or Heavenly Delusion, while sure, those shows should get more popular than even they currently are, they have a fan base. My home hero, it's a goddamn cult following, and this show is really well written. I laugh at it. I laugh at these characters getting diarrhea, but I gotta admit, if you're a normal family, how are you gonna get a mafia member out of your home so you can keylog their computer? Yeah, force them to the john. It makes a lot of sense, actually. But those are just my feelings on the past couple of episodes. I'm loving this show. I love the fact that Crunchyroll messed up the subs that hard and put my clueless first friend. But if you got any feelings on any of what I talked about, let me know down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. Be sure to ring that bell, of course, so you can get notified when I upload on the channel. Like I mentioned, we do a full live reaction to both of these episodes available on my Patreon. If you're Interested. And while you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today we have Davlin, Eric Barton, and Durberg Jude. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.